Hello, everyone, and thanks for the introduction. It has been quite hectic few days in uh, Santa Clara and in the event as well. And uh, it's so nice to be here, see you all of you face to face, meet our partners, old friends from the XR community. And uh, it's also nice to see that life is getting back to normal more or less over here. I'm based in Hong Kong and we are still living under strict rules of, of COVID restrictions. And uh, today I'm going to speak to you a bit about personal metaverse. And before I go to the topic itself, I will share you a few words about Immersa. So we are a small high-tech company from Finland. We have less than 20 employees as of now, and we got acquired by Hexagon last July. So we do spatial mapping and visual positioning for everyone, everywhere, on every device. Lots of has changed since the acquisition, and now we are ready to scale the business. So let's talk. If I can just change the slide. There were some technical problems with the slide before the keynote. Can you do it manually? Perfect. So let's talk. I'm going to touch on two themes. First, I will start with the evolution of social media. And after that, I will move on to revolution of personal metaverse, which will be the next big thing. And I will give you an example of what we have been working as a company recent months and uh, show how the world will change in next 18 to 24 months. Okay. So let's start with the metaverse. It's very similar slide that I saw in the beginning of the event when the CEO of Unity was showing it, about the like, same layout but different topics. So everyone is talking about metaverse. So even some companies are so focused on it that they might change their name to show everyone how important it is for them. And most of these big medias that you can see on this slide are talking about metaverse, if not every day, at least every week. From BBC to CNN. And it's also funny when I meet new people and I explain what we do at Immersal, i.e. spatial mapping, visual positioning for everyone, everywhere, on every device. Typically, they pretend that they understand what I'm talking about and what we are doing. But if I explain to them that we enable metaverses for everyone, everywhere, on every device, the reaction is totally different. Typically, they are like, wow, amazing, metaverse. That's quite a hot topic. And what is the difference between your metaverse and the metaverse that Facebook is now working on? And typically, I just say that I define metaverse as the internet of 3D. So basically, if you have been using your Google Maps on your mobile phone in 2D format, and you have the dots moving there, going forward, it will be in 3D. Here you can see the evolution of social media in a nutshell. So I started from 2004 when Facebook was launched in the USA. And about two years later, everyone was using that in Finland. I still recall the moment when I was in military service. It is mandatory in Finland. And my friends told me about this. Matthias, hey, you have to check this out. It's amazing. It's so easy to use. And everyone is there. Then a few years later, WhatsApp was launched. And suddenly, all of my friends were using that. Then came Instagram, 
and one year later, WeChat as well. WeChat has not never been like so popular in Europe, but when we moved to China together with my wife four years back, I had to like learn how to use it. And it's also quite fascinating how important it is in China. So basically, the whole society has been created around WeChat. So if you leave from your home, you only need your mobile phone with you. You can pay all the payments in the store. You can do flight bookings. You can top up your mobile phone, basically everything. And I think it's more than social media. It's, it's more like a, like a super app, what we haven't seen in the Western world. Uh, then after that, we have seen the rise of TikTok. It's extremely popular as of now. And I was also using that for a while until they blocked that in Hong Kong. And recently we have seen Clubhouse. And uh, we have been thinking as a company, what will be the next thing? And we came to conclusion that the personal metaverse will be the next thing. And we have to do something for about it. The tech is already available, but there's no killer app as of now. And we were thinking that it's going to change in next 18 to 24 months. So a personal metaverse for everyone on any device. According to Statista, there is already 15 billion devices in the market. This includes all the mobile phones and tablets. In addition to this, there should be around 2 million AR classes by end of this year. And we as a company, we understand how important AR classes will be going forward. But they are not yet here. There is some proof of concepts, some testing done, and maybe some industrial use cases at the moment. But they are not yet mainstream, but they will be. But we didn't want to wait so long, so we thought that we have to do something and not wait two, three, or four years. May I introduce you the Immersal app? So the idea of the app is that you can create your own personal metaverse. We made it so easy that even your grandparents can do it without asking any help from you. The idea is that you choose the location, what you want to map. Then you scan the environment with your mobile phone or tablet. It can be old Nokia phone, or it can be the latest iPhone. You choose it. Once the map is ready, you can create your own immersive experiences. In the first phase, we will support pictures and videos as well. And there can be audio in the video as well. These will be like in 2D format in the beginning. Once the immersive experience is created, you can share it with your friends. So there's already 15 billion devices, like I said earlier. So it should be available for everyone, everywhere, on any device. So, I would describe it as simple and fun, all in one. Here you can see a teaser how the app will look like. It starts basically from the mapping part. You choose the location. Then you log in in the app. And after that, you start capturing. You click Start Capture. And it looked like you are taking your video, but actually you are just taking several pictures from the environment. You have to move your camera slightly like this, and then you have to also move yourself a bit that you get also the 3D effect. And those pictures together with GPS coordinates, we submit them to our cloud service. 
in our cloud service, we create so-called 3D point cloud, which is the machine readable version of the physical world. Then that map is always linked to that certain position. You can't share that map and use it somewhere else. It's always in that certain position. Once the map is ready, then you can start adding your own content. So you can add videos and also pictures in the first point. And once the immersive experience is ready, you can just share it to your friends. You click share, you get the QR code that you can share to your friends when you see it face to face, or you can take a screenshot and send it to your friends via WhatsApp, Facebook, or WeChat. The best part of this is the 15 billion devices already in the market. Here you can see the app in action. So there can be like some teens or some older users taking pictures of themselves, adding these pictures on the, on the app or in the, in the physical location, and then sharing them with their friends. Or one use case could be that you go shopping with your friends, you test out different kind of clothes, take pictures, and then tag them in front of the shop. And the next day your friends might come there and check out what kind of clothes you were wearing. And then they like, can like the pictures as well and kind of like rate your, your pictures. Then one use case could be, for example, the McDonald's. There's like employee selfies in front of the McDonald's and it's kind of like uh, customers can go after they have had the meal in McDonald's and like the employees who serve them. So if they like get good service, they can like the pictures and based on these likes, McDonald's can give rewards for the employees who is the employee of the month. There's so many different use cases and once the app will be available, I would like to hear your feedback. How do you find it and what is kind of like the best use case for you or your, for, for your friends? So one more thing. We didn't want to forget enterprises. So basically, you can also white label this app if you like. Or, or the tech can be integrated part of your existing application if you have it. The best part of the white labeling is that you can create different kind of functionalities. So let's say you have an ecosystem of partners. They can be McDonald's, KFC, Subway, Ferrari, Audi. And every time when the customer or consumer is creating their own personal metaverse, you can force them to add one of the logo from the ecosystem in their own personal metaverse. And rest of the content will be chosen by the consumer. And because we know the exact position and rotation of the device, so we can easily show in the app how far away is closed McDonald's. So let's say a consumer wants to put McDonald's logo in the app. It's showing the logo in the app and showing that, hey, closed McDonald's is 500 meters that way. Someone might want to add Ferrari's logo and it's showing that, okay, closest Ferrari shop, retail shop is five kilometers that way. So there's endless opportunities how to utilize it. Then around the picture is frames that can be also white labeled. So it, let's say if the app is white labeled by T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, they can sell these frames to local partners. So let's say in the East Coast, these frames are sponsored by McDonald's. In the West Coast, these are sponsored by KFC. 
and because we have the exact location, so we know how to manage it. Then the second option is that you can also integrate the service part of your existing app. You might have like AT&T app, Singtel app, Rakuten app, wherever you are. And then it can, can be part of your existing app, let's say AT&T lens, Singtel lens, Rakuten lens. And the best part of this is that you get all the data. So our business model is so different compared to our US or Chinese competitors that we are giving all the data for you. And when you combine this data with your existing databases and analytics, it's very powerful tool for your business. And with this tool, you can then create different kind of new services. What is not yet in the market, but will be in coming months. And I would say maybe the best part of this is that it's so easy and fast to deploy. So we can deploy it as little as in three weeks. So if here's any mobile network operators, for example, we can deploy this for you in three weeks. So if you are still hesitating how to start your metaverse journey, this would be extremely good tool for you. When I was creating the deck a few weeks ago, we were not sure that when the app will be available in Apple Store and Google Play. But now I can say that surprise, surprise, it's already available in Google, Sto uh, sorry, in, in Apple Store. And it will be available in Google Play in next seven to 10 days. And uh, I propose that all of you will download the app, you test it out, give it a chance for that, and let me know how do you find it, what kind of things you are still kind of like missing from the app, and is there something what we have to still improve. So this is the first version of the app, and we keep on improving it week by week. So please follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter. And uh, if you want to hear more about the app or hear more about the technical details, so please reach out to us. We are in booth 526 in Hall A. So let's build the metaverse of tomorrow today. Thank you. Any questions? I guess we are done then. Thank you.